Hi there, my name is Will and I'm going to walk you through a few different ways that you can store variables between your flows in Kestra. Now jumping right in, I've got three different examples to do this. The first example where you might pass variables between flows is using a subflow. So let's have a look at that example. Now in this example here, I have a very simple flow that has a calls a subflow task here and it accesses a value from that. So what happens here is we've got a variable at the top here. Now this variable here can only be accessed in this flow, but because I'm calling the subflow from this flow, I can pass it in as an input so that I can access it in that flow. And then I can generate outputs in that flow and pass it back to our parent flow. So if we have a quick look at our subflow, you can see that here I have the input defined here, which I can then pass from the parent. And then I can return it as this return output, which I can then sort of explicitly define in this output block at the bottom. So that's one way that you can pass variables between flows. And if I actually just go back to the parent, um, so we go back to the parent flow and I then execute this. We'll see that when I execute this flow successfully, we'll see that the subflow does get created as we would expect. And we can see that it does therefore return the variable that we pass as an input and then receive back as an output with this extra bit of text that says subflow. So that is one way that you can do it, but that does rely on you having a parent flow and a child flow and having to be able to call them every single time. Maybe you're looking for something that instead of calling the flow can save that variable or some data and then you can access that later. And that's where the key value store comes in. Now in our next example, we're gonna use the key value store. Now this can take that concept a little bit further by making our flow stateful. So now what we can do is we can set the value with a task and then retrieve it as well, which means we can set this in different flows as well and then access them. So we can maybe set the state of an API call that we made in one flow and then access that state in a different flow completely unrelated. So you don't necessarily have to have them trigger each other or have any relation. So very helpful. This example, again, is gonna use our very basic debug true variable here. I'm able to set the debug key and then give it the value that we have. And then I'm able to then just retrieve that with the key. And then I can then just simply use an output expression to be able to access that at the bottom here. So when I execute this flow, we'll see that what happens is it's going to set it and then successfully we will get that true value at the end. And if I do pop over to the namespace quickly, we can actually see that in fact, it does have it stored here so we can easily see what's in our key value store. I can delete stuff but I can also edit it too. So if I ever wanted to change the value to, I could do that. And we can see it's currently set to true, but I could save that and set it to false if I wanted to. And the value can be a bunch of different data types too. So this is a really helpful way of being able to access different variables between flows when there isn't necessarily cooling happening between those flows directly. And then last but not least, we also have namespace variables as well. So here, just like the variable that we have defined in our flow, we can also define variables inside of our namespace. Now, if I go back to that namespaces page and click team, you'll see that in the enterprise edition, there is a variables tab. And when I click here, I'm able to define a bunch of variables just like I did in my flow. So I could add a few extras as well. So here I've just created a few more and it's just sorted them into alphabetical order. So now I can access these key value pairs similar to the key value store, but these will not be able to be changed by your flows. So just like variables, once you set them here, that is how they are defined. So super useful if you wanna be able to access the same state. For example, you want everything to run on debug, but you don't want flows editing that value unnecessarily, then the variable Variables, the namespace variables here is perfect for that. So let's just jump into our example. So here we can see that I, to access the namespace variable, I simply use the expression namespace dot the name of our variable. Whereas for the ones flow scoped, I would use vars.debug. So here I can click execute and we'll see that the two log messages are both gonna say true. So we can then edit that as well. And I can change this to be uh, one of our other ones. So I can set that to be hello. And then we'll see that that should hopefully say weld as we defined in our uh, variable. So here we can see weld. And then I also put state 
as well so we can see that one too and we'll see that that does in fact give us failed which is what we put so super useful but the key difference with the key value store is i can't edit these in my flows but you can add variables using terraform too if you would prefer to do that hopefully you found that useful and now you've got some better insight on how you can share variables and data between your workflows and hopefully there is a method there that suits your needs Make sure to join our Slack community where you can discuss with us further and give us a start on GitHub.